This episode of the Golf Game Podcast on the Sports Game Podcast Network is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 states. Head to cut.com, that's QTT.com, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. And we're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick them for a chance to win 100 times your money in the NBA, MLB, and golf. Sign up today using promo Golf SGPN to get 100% deposit match. And we're also brought to you by Hall of and bets the sports betting research platform for pilates, play props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and stop making smarter bets today. All right, DJs. Happy Easter. It's your boy, Boston Cap, with the God of God himself, Steve Shermer. Steve, happy Jesus' birthday. Yep, you too. Uh, it is the birthday. sweat. Oh. It, it's the sweat of your life right now. Nah, it's oh, it's not? It's not? Mm-mm. 150 to one, Jaeger, uh, Scotty, each way. Nah, I'm good. You're you're good. I'm good. You're not at least a little bit uncomfortable at the moment. Yeah, a little bit. I was so it, I was I was uh I had to take a pot. I had to change the ballast in my headlight right because I called the Infinity dealership and they wanted like I don't know two fucking grand and I was like absolutely not. I was like it's a seventy dollar part. <laughs> and so I got a new bulb, new ballast. The problem was is you have to take off the front bumper <laughs> to be able to do that project. So I was doing that all afternoon and uh, getting frustrated. And I'd look at my text and I see BK. It's like, hey buddy. I'm like, oh fuck, what is that? <laughs> then I saw yours. I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> I was like, oh no. Yeah, it's it's the uh, it's like a Jonah Hill and a super bad saying people don't forget. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that, yeah. that little throwaway bet that you just thought was uh, you know, BK acting completely ridiculous. And uh, uh you are uh, currently sweating. It is uh Scotty first place, which we'll get to in just a second with some takes you made on the Tuesday show without me. Uh and Jaeger C2. So let me ask you a question. If this is dead heated, you gotta pay yeah. it out. Uh, and I'll do the dead heat rules. Okay, he was, he was concerned about the fact that you would try to weasel out because it was te- because it was dead heated. But okay, you are a man of your word. Then I appreciate that. Yes. Okay. Um, All right. What do you think of the tournament so far? I haven't. I didn't really watch much yesterday. I watched there's well, tournament. it's going exactly how I thought it would go. Scotty's in the mix, and you were so offended by the notion of his odds at the beginning of the week. And it, it, it seemed like watching from afar. And I, and I talked about this on the preview show that if you were going to build a golf course for Scotty Scheffler and set it up a certain way, it would be how it's set up this week at Memorial Park. And there was no real indication that he was going to slow down. And it's not like you can point to the players and say, well, he did it all with his putter. He only gained like a stroke putting at that point. So yeah. it seemed like, what our colleague was trying to say is, look, there's nothing about this golf course that makes me think that Scotty's going to trip up here. This field is complete dog shit. dog shit. So I'm not trying to make up some excuses in my head saying like Scotty's not going to be in the mix. And yeah, I'm a little concerned uh, about the fact that, you know, he's probably going to take all our money anyways, but I don't like betting things three to one. And it seemed wow. like, and I got this from him and it seemed like listening to you, is that people decided that they hated Scotty's outright number and they just decided, well, he's not going to win because golf. And anytime you actually are betting with your feelings yeah. with nothing else behind it, it usually goes very poorly for you. So I just, I guess sure. I just did not understand sure. why there was so much hatred. It's not hatred. I guess, I guess I was just sick away. of, I was sick of the inevitability of him winning while it is golf. And look, he fucking clearly, probably is going to win today but it's just i don't know it may one like i said before scotty's fucking boring there's nothing exciting about scotty and so if he's just going to go on this fucking run and it's going to be three to ones every fucking week that that takes joy out of my life so i am i'm trying to will it to happen okay but, i mean all the books are really telling you was and this is another thing too i think we need to get perspective that if you were so anti Scotty's not going to win this week. You were literally arguing like a minus 300 bet if you took it the other way. So that, so like, so it it also seemed like, well, if you thought Scotty was, if you were concerned about Scotty winning, you had to bet it. (laughs) The flip side of the coin is, well, if you were just so hard against Scotty not winning, why wasn't minus 300 field against Scotty? Like the only bet you made of the week. 
So yeah, so it was funny. So it's funny. I did look at that. I was like, no, nah, that's gross. That's 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 more gross than Scotty three to one. Exactly, <laughs> and, th and that's turning it back on you, saying, okay, like the question is being posed. Okay, <clears throat> am I really betting Scotty Scheffler plus three hundred to win a golf tournament? Flip it back on you. Are you really betting yeah. minus 300 that Scotty will not win <laughs> on, a golf, course, on yeah. a golf course yeah. tailor made to him at the peak of his powers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Betting betting against uh, Scheffler minus 300 sounds fucking psychotic. No, I mean, listen, he could still blow it, but I, I oh, just, yeah. I thought that was <laughs> reckless rhetoric considering we knew Scotty was going to be in the mix. And really, all the books were telling us was it, like he was going to be in the mix and he had about a one in four chance of closing on Sunday, like in the mix. Yeah. Against a bad field, against, against, a, bunch, against a bunch of bumps. So, so we'll see. But let's move on to the Valero. Um, so you call it a good field? It's uh, good-ish. I I, th I think we've been beaten so much <laughs> that we don't really know what a good field is anymore. Because look, like Robbie Shelton is still in this field. Okay, it's fair. Tyson fair. Alexander's still in this field. There's still a lot of garbage that gets here. But for a Valero, it's not a bad field. Uh, it's a lot better than last year. So uh, you got to go in a little bit. So let's go over a couple names. Cause there's a, a, there's a bunch of names in this field that I feel like are struggling ahead of the masters. And yeah. this is really their last chance to prove themselves and kind of turn things around. So I just want to gauge your temperature of these guys uh, before the masters. So, yeah. okay. Rory, who is probably going to be, I'm going to say nine to one to win this event. And this is an example of a favor that I do not have any appetite of betting. No, not even a little bit. Okay. Not with the, not with the mental gymnastics. You usually have to play here, but which means, I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, no. I mean, you know, yeah, I've come around on Rory, but I'm not betting him nine to one. at Augusta. It's not doing it. Okay. Uh, did you see him and Keegan Bradley pulling uh, questions out of a hat and uh, using it as a giant promotion for uh, the Boston Bullfrogs of TGL? Uh, maybe you shouldn't have. As a Keegan guy, maybe you should not uh, watch I'm that. I'm not going. Okay. All right. It was bad enough when I saw him hawking the, uh, whatever that NFT DraftKings thing was. <laughs> yeah, he's sponsored by, hey, he's sponsored by that, right? He's sponsored by Rainmakers. Oh, that's what it is, Rainmakers. Yes. There you go. All right. Uh, Colin Morikawa is also in this field. How do you feel about him? No. 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 You know, something's off with him, too. I don't really know what the vibe is. I mean, surprisingly... I mean, it's, I guess not surprisingly, because he's a great ball striker, but he's been really good at the Masters. But he's not coming in all that great of form. Yeah. So I, I think he definitely needs. For me, to, I like I, I feel like I would consider him positional, like positional only. I'm not betting him outright, but positional only. But I gotta see something this week. I gotta see some sort of good ball striking because it, it honestly just hasn't really been there. Yeah. This year, uh, Ludwig, how you feeling about him from this week? Fine. I mean, he's just he's just a. I feel like he's just so young. I like it's it's tough to get down or up on him. Just kind of go to roll with it if you like him. Okay. I mean, he's coming up what a fifth place finish or top ten finish at players. So coming in good form. I think the question is first Masters, first major. By the way, never played a major before. Before. Um, we'll see yeah. How goes. What, who is it? What did we say is it, who's the last uh, first time winner at? Augusta was a Fuzzy Zeller, is that right? Well, well, it's Fuzzy Zeller, yeah, but I think Fuzzy Zeller also played like a dozen majors before that. So, but I mean, Will Zalas Horace also came to Augusta National. I don't think it was his first major, but it was first time at Augusta. And he finished second, so it can be done. I know I, you're not a Will Z guy. Yeah, you uh, you were proven kind of right this week. Uh, Max Homa, no, who I everybody was picking for the Masters. Yeah, he was doing all with a putter. And I, I think I think he burned you the players. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He did. Uh, Spieth. Spieth. How are we feel about Spieth, Mister Augusta himself? Uh, yeah, I mean, he just got a. It doesn't. It doesn't really seem to matter what type of form he's in. Like I don't know. He's he's not being playing very well right now, though. <laughs> no, he isn't. But something strikes me that Phil said last year. They asked him why did you play so well, coming off a really bad form, and Phil said that. He knows that when he goes when he goes to Augusta, he knows that he has some some margin to he knows where to miss, right? And it might be that with speed. Like, listen, his ball striking has been pretty crappy for the last month or so. Yeah. But going to Augusta, where you know where you can miss if you're going to miss, you can get up and down. Maybe that's comforting for speed. But he's still priced at you know 
as if he should be like a four time masters winner at this point. <laughs> yeah. Just regardless of what he does. So I know. Yeah. I know. Um, couple of, and then Hideki coming off a good finish. The players, how you feel about Hideki before the masters? I like Hideki. He seems like he's playing pretty good this year. So yeah, I like Hideki and I like the narrative of the cup, uh, not defending, but playing really well and having a chance to repeat uh, a year or two after he's already won. I think that's a, I like that narrative. That's a fun narrative. Okay. Uh, Fitzpatrick finally took the weights out of his driver and started to hit the ball good at the players. That's crazy, isn't it? It is nuts. We we bet on this stupid sport. We're stuck. It's so games. stupid. <laughs> so dumb. Really dumb. Who else? Who else is like this right now? Who else has some weight at the bottom of their shaft right now? That they don't exactly. Well, we have no idea. Yeah. Maybe Max Homa will remove that from his driver, and then all of a sudden he's going to start driving the well this week. And we're like, what the hell happened? Why don't we just stick to, I don't know, hockey? Uh, hockey's hockey's a variant sport as well, but not like golf. But I feel like hockey's no, pretty fun. Not like golf. Uh, and then Fleetwood, the other, I think he's the last big name in this field. Stop it. Never winning. He hasn't, he's never played Augusta all that good, anyways. Yeah. And he's not playing did all that good. Right did, did, did he have one good? Oh, man, I feel like he had. I feel like he gave me a first round lead of sweat one year. Possibly. I don't think he's finished in the top 20 ever there, though. Yeah. I'm good with I'm good with old Tommy Boy. Fine. Okay. All right. Well, those are the top names in the field. After that, there's kind of a drop off. Well, I mean, yeah. think about think about the top. We had what? What do we have this week? We had Scotty, Scotty, Finau, Air quotes, Air quotes, Zalatoris. He's not exactly a quality fucking player anymore. Okay. Uh, so and Tony. But- was there anything more predictable yesterday? I didn't watch it, but I didn't need to. When I saw Tony Finau shoot a 62 on Friday and knowing he was going over on Saturday, was there anything more predictable in the world? No, I did think, though. So his odds to win this morning was like 18 to 1, only two back. I thought that was a little difficult yeah. to tell yeah. me. Considering Scotty? all the bu- – yeah, considering he's basically two back at Scotty with a bunch of bums between him and the lead. Yeah. I don't know. That was a little disrespectful, but uh, I think he – Actually, he bogeys his first hole, but then he birdie at the next two. So I think he's like two or three back right now. Today, yeah. Yeah. All right. So those are the big names of this field. I would probably imagine Rory's probably going to go off at like nine to one. Ludwig, probably 12 to one. Colin, 17, 18 to one. Homa, 16, 18 to one. Speed, 15 to one because he's a winner. Odds are going to be trash this week. And we'll get to some of the, well, I don't know if you're going to be here. You got a jet uh, before the end of this podcast, but you know, we last couple of years, we've had a mix of uh, chalk at the top of the board hitting and complete long shots. So who fucking, who won last year? I can't, I could could try to think of that this morning. I can't remember. Corey Corey Connors won again. Oh fuck. Mr. Valero. Connors. Yeah. Connors. Yeah. Top 20 at Augusta. No one betting that. Okay. There's already bets in my brain. Yeah, I can't wait for you to mother F that guy. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, why don't we take our first break? Uh, how long are you going to stick around for, you know, 15 more minutes or yeah, probably 15 more minutes. long enough for me to me. show you the really cool uh, Lazy River at uh, yeah. TBC San Antonio? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right, why, don't we take, <laughs> why don't we take our first ad break and then we will start talking about uh, the Oaks course at TBC San Antonio. All right. Closing Cut this is the peer-to-peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 states. Peer-to-peer social betting is a new and better way to bet. Bet against your friends or other users on sports, politics, pop culture, and other events with verifiable outcomes, plus tons of social features that give the feel of a real betting social network. Low, big, and fully customizable odds. Plus, they handle the payment side of things, so you never have to chase anybody for cash. Like BK is going to have to do to me. Uh, rewards get cash every single time you bet against your friends and other users. Download Cut today in the App Store or at cut.com. That's K U T T and use code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. And underdog fantasy. Uh, once again, very sad that the Pick'em has left uh, Florida. Uh, I did just I did find out we could do the drafts though, so that's at least something. But if you have access to the Pick'em, I highly recommend it. It's super fun, uh, lots of great contests, and uh, sometimes the numbers are pretty soft. And it's another way to uh, you know go a higher or lower on some of your favorite golfers. What you do is you pick between two and five of your favorite players uh, to build the Pick'em entry. You can also make them a rivals pit, which pits two players against each other: who hits more greens, who hits more birdies, etc., etc., etc. So sign up today with promo code Golf SGPN. And get your first deposit doubled up to 100 bucks as well as an instant pick and special. Visit underdogfantasy.com and find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with my promo code GOLF, SGPN, to get your first deposit doubled 
equal to up to 100 bucks as well as an instant pick special. Must be 18 plus. The president's state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms apply. Conservative play call 1-800-522-4700 or visit ncpgambling.org. I was going to ask if you were aware of the, uh, the latest scoreboard update. Yeah, I have it on. I'm watching. Okay. Okay. All right. I watched him. I watched him drain the 26 foot putt from the fringe. Okay. So, uh, so it's gonna be a very, uh, nervous Easter dinner, uh, in about a couple hours here. We'll be fine. Okay. Siwoo. All right. Wait, where, 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 where the hell did Siwoo come from? Oh, is he coming back from the pack? What the, he's sat under. When did that happen? What did well, he shoot probably today? Way ahead, probably way ahead of everybody. What was he like? Probably, I think he's probably like four under for the day. Yeah. He just All finished right. his front nine though. That's not bad. Okay. Sweet. All right. I think front nine is easier than back nine, but okay. All right. Here's TBC San Antonio. This is the Oaks course at TBC San Antonio. There's actually two golf courses. TBC San Antonio. First, before we get to that, one of the things that's really nice about uh, TBC San Antonio, really nice Marriott right here. You know, you, let's zoom in right sure. here. Great pool area. <laughs> and there's a reason why guys like Matt Kuchar and Brant Snedeker, they love bringing their kids here is because, you know, they can shack up for free at the Marriott here, send the kids over the Lazy River, you know, maybe the wife can get a nice burger at the Rivertop Grill, and you can go play golf. So that's one perk about uh, this tournament. The other one is there's actually two golf courses at TBC San Antonio. So this is the Canyons course up here. This is a, a Pete Dye design. And I remember, I think a couple of years ago, I forget who it was, but it was some sleeper was really trendy. And the reason why was uh, it, the narrative was going around that he won at TBC San Antonio on a corn ferry event so of course he should have a leg up but the problem was though he won on this golf course <laughs> not, never played this one it's awesome so i forget That's exactly right. who it was but uh you know don't always trust all the narratives that are uh floating out there but so this is a greg norman design with some consultation from sergio garcia which has kind of an interesting history behind it because sergio garcia at the time was engaged to greg norman's uh daughter and they had a very uh, bad falling out. So Sergio, before he jumped to live, never really played this golf course a whole lot. Uh, I think that's probably a reason why is uh, he just didn't really want to be associated with anything to do with Greg Norman anymore, which is funny because then he ended up jumping to live. So, <laughs> that's funny. I guess I guess money talks at the end of the day and can uh, uh, repair some uh, you know relationship scars, but. This golf course is built on the side of the hill and it's built with the design of, uh, with the prevailing winds. So around this time of year the, or in Texas, the prevailing wind is usually out of the South, which is good because this is basically the high point of the property right here up near the driving range. And it plays downhill to a low point. here. It's about like 125 foot elevation drop. So all the hills, and it's very linear. You know, you can see all the hills, you know, basically everything goes either downhill or uphill with this golf course. So all the downhill holes play into the wind. All the uphill holes play with the wind. The problem is sometimes the wind can flip around to the north here, and that makes it basically unplayable at this point, especially like a number eight and nine here that are really long. It's uphill into like a 25 mile per hour wind. Good luck. So, but in as long as there's a south wind, it's uh it's mostly fine. Um, you know, as far as a golf course goes, this is fairly vanilla as they come on the PGA tour. Wow. Um, you know, I mean, just taking you through the first couple holes here, it is challenging. We'll get to how difficult it is relative to other ones, but you know, from a ball striker standpoint, it's one of the tougher ones in the PGA tour. There just isn't a whole lot of room off the tee here. You know, these fairways only about 25 to 30 yards wide, only a small little patch of uh overseer rough here, which isn't all that penal, but off the fairway here um, is a lot of usually either big, thick magnolia trees or native grasses. And if you see a guy, you know, going to the native area on shot tracker, it's basically going to a bunch of weeds and rocks and, just a bunch of garbage. Um, so this actually is one of the more penal places to miss in a non-rough location. And that's a big reason why there's also a lot of fair, deep fairway bunkers protecting the driving zones. Like, you know, for that. example, I, yeah. yeah, I remember that. So deep bunkers, yeah. Yeah. So on the second hole here, this is a downhill par five, a very long puzzle piece shaped bunker here. It's pretty deep. There's a center line bunker as well. If there's a North wind, 
if you're in it, it's kind of, it's basically a one stroke, not necessarily one stroke penalty, but like, it's not, it's pretty difficult to get out of, you know, it's yeah. not like you can just, you know, get a long iron. You're probably splashing out <coughs> for a layup shot. And these greens are very well protected too. So this second green, uh, you know, it's a double green, but this is a relatively small target, well protected and guarded by some bunkers here. Everything you basically have to carry through the air here. Uh, we'll talk to the bunkers a little bit. These are actually one of the, some of the toughest bunkers uh, on the PJ Tour to get up and down from. Now, they did do a renovation that, that uh, a couple of years ago to try and make it a little easier for member play. Uh, they replaced the sand mm -hmm. in them to so create, I guess, a little more spin. They softened some of the, the edges. Didn't really do a whole lot as far as the change in the difficulty on the PG Tour, but they did try and do some bunker work trying to, you know, make it a little easier, um, you know, for these guys. Um, you know, and then it works its way all the way down to the bottom part of the property and then it works back uphill. So number eight, this is an uphill 604 yard uh, par five. And just zooming in here, this kind of shows, you know, this is a good example of just the approach shots here are pretty difficult. So it's, it's a very, it's, yeah, so it's a long but very narrow green. These are really deep bunkers here. You know, there's a big bunker short of the green as well. These are, this is basically out of bounds at this point. So relatively difficult approach shots at this golf course. And then number nine, do you remember the significance of number nine at TBC San Antonio? No. It's your old friend, Kevin Na, who oh, yes. spent Hell a little yes. bit of time yeah. in the woods. Right over there. That's right. Yep. So yeah. you can find the video on YouTube where he puts in the woods, looks around for it, comes back to the tee, hits another one in the woods, finds that ball, and then takes about like seven shots to hack out. And then yep. cards, I think, Beautiful. a 16, which I believe is the one of the highest scores on a par four. Uh, registered on a, the PGA. Could happen to a nicer guy. Even so, yeah. Even so, even if you avoid all this, again, like you know, long. But th this green is also pretty heavily slow from back to front here. Just a skinny green here. Just not a whole lot. It's not a very inviting green to hit approach shots into. And a lot of these greens are are like that. Um, um let's go over to sixteen. So Greg Norman has an affinity for Riviera and you know, the, the six hole of Riviera has the, the bunker in the middle of the green. Well, he created a green with a bunker in the middle of the green here. Well, I, I, I don't really have anything else to say other than that, but it's just that it exists. I forgot about that stupid hole. <laughs> Dumb hole. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a bunker in the middle of the green. It's not it's it's not as so good a green as the one in Riviera, but this is his homage to that hole. Seventeen is a good is is what a relatively good uh, hole down the stretch here. So mm -hmm. it's technically drivable. It's downhill, but you see a lot of guys ba bailing out either in the bunker here or in the short grass over here or just bailing out way right, and it becomes kind of an up and down game. And you really got to birdie this if you know you really want a chance to like kind of. Um, stay in a tournament. So this is a critical hold down the stretch. And then the 18th here, uh, par five up the hill, split fairway, Love split it. by this Creek right mm -hmm. here. There's only two water hazards yep. on the golf course. This is one of them. So I, I remember, I think Phil took like an eight on this hole because he kept splashing it, like bouncing it back into the Creek here. So for these guys, if you hit a good drive, it's not all that challenging, but if you're in the rough, it's probably a layup, and then you can spin the ball off the green here. But, you know, it, it's a good opportunity to get a closing birdie. Maybe you hit, see a guy hit it into the water. Maybe you can flip the tournament, but that's TBC San Antonio, at least just the golf course. Um, it's okay. It's well-maintained. I've been in communication in the past with a member here who had mm – -hmm. I don't think it was uh, any pushback to what mm -hmm. I said, but he had a couple um, – counterpoints and i mostly God. agree with them i think as a member it's a good place to play but for watching professional golf it's okay so i feel like all tbcs are really well maintained well yeah i mean there should be they're expensive to be a member at that's what, that's what i mean like i feel like i feel like they're all expensive as fuck and all in really good shape because they have to be mm-hmm 
Yeah, they're, they're expensive. They're expensive to be a member at. Uh, they're owned by the PGA Tour, so they have to be in really good shape. Yeah. It's just from a design standpoint. I mean, look, like you're asking me to get excited about a golf course that literally everything is just right in front of you, dead straight. Yeah. That's that's really about and, it. And 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 Augusta is right around the corner. Like that's all we can think about is next week, not this week. I don't care. Let's hurry up and get through this tournament so we can get the next week. Right. And I don't think this is a really good like warm up to Augusta. Like I can't think of anything that's ever happened in Valero that changed my mind about what happened to Augusta versus the opposing Memorial Park. There's a lot of things that like, I mean, there's no room really in the masters besides like Scotty and Fina. They're actually there right now. But if I was a lot of these, if I was Rory or Ludwig or Fleet, Fleetwood, like I would have oh, yeah. rather gone to Houston and got used, got some practice in tournament conditions, chipping off of like tight ryegrass on a pretty crazy undulated greens. And yeah, like hole number 15, that short par three, like you, the guy spinning wedges off the green back into the water. That's basically what you see on 15 or number 12. Yeah. Like, yeah, that it, was like that's, yeah, that's, that's a great that's practice. A it is. Yeah. It, oh, it's, it's so much, it's so good. I mean, it's, it, it's good with the, with the grandstands around it too. And I, if, if we ever go to, I mean, I can't imagine we'll ever go to the Houston Open, but I, I, I wouldn't mind parking myself on uh, 15 all day and just see guys, uh, especially when the, yeah, exactly. the pin, that the pin is right in front, that sucker pin. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's uh, fun. Yeah, how many sure. how many guys hit in the water? I think co- down the stretch there. Oh, I, I that, think the, the final and, two group plus five. <laughs> yeah, yesterday. yeah, on 15 and 16, like the last, like it was some pretty bad golf down the stretch yesterday. Uh, everybody yeah. was seems like it was hitting in the water on 16 and 15. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, hopefully you uh, go hit some of those water balls. I got to go cook, brother. Okay. All right. Well, we will take uh, a little break here. Capper, thank you for joining me. Uh, yep. You can Catch watch the rest of the stream where I talk about the golf course. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, talk to you on uh, okay. Tuesday. I'll put, you, I'll put you up on the TV so all the fam can uh, watch you break down a, a golf course. <laughs> uh, I'm, you're not going to do that, but thanks. <laughs> Later, all right. Take care. All right. So we are also brought to you by um i'm sorry we're brought to you by hall of fame bets win bigger by betting smarter this nba season with hall of fame bets the sports betting analytics platform for parlays player props and game lines we share every nba and soccer bet with historical stats and data enter any parlay idea into hall of fame bets is revolutionary parlay optimizer tool to get hit rates broken down by leg as well as expect a probability for the entire parlay sort all players by hit rate for any bets to learn which players are hot and which picks have value so stop betting in the dark and join over thirty thousand users researching with hall of fame bets to craft more intelligent data different parlays download the hall of fame bets app visit hofbets.com and use code sgpn to get 50 percent off your first month today start researching start winning with hall of fame bets and by the way you know in case you I mean, obviously, you know this, but you are listening currently to the uh, the Golf Gambling Podcast. But we also have a great a lot of other great shows on our network. So in honor of March Madness, we are fe- uh, featuring the Sports Gambling Podcast, our flagship show, hosted by Ryan Real Money Kramer and Sean Stacking Money Green, where these guys have been picking tournament games against spread since 2012. Obviously, if you're watching this, there are a couple games today, Elite Eight games. Go check them out real quick, see where they're on. You can also check out the college basketball experience with Kobe Dan, a.k.a. Pick Dundee, Ryan Moneyline Mac, everybody's said Noah B to continue their unmatched coverage for college basketball betting. So subscribe to the Sports Gaming Podcast or the college basketball experience wherever you get your podcasts. All right. So let's go to our solo layouts. And let's get rid of this. And let's talk about the GCSAA stuff. So let's just go over some facts. Nothing's really changed. Let you know when we talked about the Houston Open last week. Obviously, I had to talk about an agronomy change uh, that changed how it was playing. This is really mostly the same stuff we've already seen for the Valero Texas Open. So um, you know, Greg Norman designed it in 2010. There was a bunker renovation in 2021. They replaced the sand uh, to make it a little more easier to spin out of the bunkers. They softened some of the edges as well. We'll get to how it changed the difficulty of these bunkers for tournament play. Didn't really change it all that much. Um, you know, average green size, 6,400 square feet. That's a little larger than PG Shore average, but you know, these greens have some undulation to it, some shelving. Um, so they play a little smaller, especially when I showed you uh, on the Google Earth, just how well protected some of these bunker or some of these greens are and how narrow they are. You know, these are relatively small targets to hit off and that I hit too. And that's probably a reason why uh, this is one of the more tougher uh, iron or t- tougher golf courses for your irons uh, on the PGA tour. 
Uh, once again, we are dealing with overseeded uh, grass this week. Uh, this is a Poa Trivialis overseed. You can see a little bit with Memorial Park, though. You know, you can see some of the green. That's the Bermuda starting to pop up a little bit. You start seeing some green there, but you know, overall, it's still an overseeded uh, green. But overseeded uh, fairways with rye and fescue. The rough is the same as last week, but it's a little longer. It's two and a quarter inches instead of one and like a quarter inches. Um, uh, at Memorial Park, so a little longer rough that they're dealing with uh, this week at the Valero Texas Open. Average uh, fairway width about twenty five to thirty yards. Uh, this area's had a lot of you know basically in drought conditions for the last three years or so, so it should play pretty firm. I didn't see a ton of rain in the forecast uh, either leading up to the tournament or this week, so maybe the greens will be running a little firm. It'll be uh, a little tough. So let's go to some past results. As we mentioned earlier, Corey Connors won this last year at about 25 to one. So I, th I remember last year that I think Cam Davis was the big shock at this tournament, but I, I think probably people might have overlooked Corey Connors because, well, he's Corey Connors and he's 25 to one and he's only won once. What's the odds that he's going to get his second victory just here. Well, he basically pulled a cage Leah Byron Nelson and won again at this tournament, uh, mostly because of an open around 64. He basically uh, held on Sam Stevens and Matt Kutcher and Sam Ryder to win at the end here. Uh, tw the scoring last year, that's one of the things about this golf course is the scoring is very variable based on the weather conditions. Sometimes you can play pretty easy. Like if I go to 2021 here, the year that Jordan Spieth won, uh, let me get off this page here. If I go to the year the Jordan Spieth one, let's go to the whole by holds. First couple days, wind was up, played pretty tough, played over a stroke, over par. But over the weekend, though, I think they got some rain on Sunday. The winds kind of laid down, played very easy the rest of the day. So you can see, you know, round one, how many holes played over par in round one. By the end of the tournament, though, it basically flipped on itself. So We'll look at the weather in a little bit, but weather can definitely change how this golf course plays. If there's not a lot of wind, if it's a little softer, it definitely can play a little more benign, but it's Texas. So usually a lot of wind with this tournament. That's really what's going to drive as far as the difficulty, as far as if this is going to be, you know, a lot of birdies or maybe a little bit up and down game. But on uh, 2021, Spieth was a uh, 12 to one favorite. Obviously gained a lot of momentum going to Augusta. He'd been playing very well coming in, hitting the ball really good. Won this tournament. Uh, people, he was a very popular pick the next week at Augusta. Did not come through for him. I think he still finished like top 10 that week. But those are the two recent favorites that have won. But we've also had some long shots. So in 2022, you had JJ Spawn, about 150 to 1 winning. Uh, again, over Matt Kutcher, seems like he's can only finish second here. Although he might have won this before. I, I don't know. Maybe way back in the day. But uh, JJ Spawn won it over Matt Kuchar and Matt Jones. Uh, I don't remember much of this tournament because I had been, I was battling a neurovirus that whole week. And I, if you go back and listen to the preview pod from that year, you can tell I was hurting. <laughs> so, uh, I don't, I think I took the rest of the week off and I was just basically on the couch for, uh, up until, uh, tournament time, but JJ Spawn won that COVID canceled the tournament in 2020, 2019. That is when Corey Connors' money qualified at 175 to 1. I believe my co host actually cashed uh, that uh, Corey Connors at that tournament. He, uh, this was a very uh, um, relatively benign TBC Sands tournament. I remember it was really warm, not a whole lot of wind that week, that year. So 20 under got it done that week. Every round played under par, as opposed to, you know, 2022, where, I mean, that was relatively easy. Last year, I guess, was pretty tough. Yeah, three rounds played over par last year. So again, it's really weather dependent. And if we look at the weather forecast coming in, looks like Thursday pretty benign. Not a whole lot of wind. So I would expect guys to get to a very good start on Thursday. So if you're going to play underdog uh, or if you're going to bet round scores, probably shade with the under. Maybe you catch, catch the bush snapping a little bit, just thinking using historical round averages. I would expect... These guys do pretty well on Thursday, but on Friday, especially Friday afternoon, looks like the wind is going to kick up. So maybe a potential wave split Thursday PM, Friday AM. Saturday looks tough for everybody. That's basically going to be trying to survive. 25 mile per hour winds 
come from the south. Sunday, the winds lay down, though. So maybe with, on Sunday, if you survive the first three days, you can start to get a little bit of a run towards you know, the top of the leaderboard there. Car a couple birdies, put some pressure on the leaders at that point. So it seems like Thursday and Sunday, relatively easy days. Friday and Saturday, I would expect to be a little tougher. Let's go to the course table. So let's talk about the areas in which it's difficult. Obviously, I kind of mentioned first, this is one of the tougher ball striking tournament or golf courses on the PGA Tour. Out of about 88 golf courses measured on the PGA Tour, including major venues since 2015, is the 26th toughest off the tee and 15th toughest with the approach shots. And, you know, again, I'll, I'll pull this back up. You know, let's just look at the first hole here. You know, it just, everything's, while everything's right out in front of you, Again, just not a whole lot of room to operate. There's a very narrow fairway, only a little small patch of rough right here. And then it's just native grasses and magnolia trees if you miss. So there's only one option, hit it dead straight, and it's not a big target. So, you know, there's not really a whole lot of room for error at TBC San Antonio. And these greens are well protected by bunkers. I mean, just looking at the, at the first green here, you have a small pop bunker guarding the, the front of the green here. Missing anything to the left here is basically dead. This is all sh short grass to the right, and it's a very, you know, relatively narrow green. So just small targets in general. So, and a lot of these holes are like that. That's a big reason why it's one of the tougher ball striking tournaments or golf courses on PG Tour. Going a little deeper into some of the stats at this, you know, the average driving distance since 2015 is 290, but as you can see, from 2015 to 2023, it looks like kind of a shift in strategy. Um, it's similar to, I believe, when we were talking about Riviera a couple of low, about a month ago, where there is a conscious shift in how you attack the golf course. Guys just decide they're just going to rip driver. And that's basically what we're kind of seeing right now. As technology's gotten better, the ball spins less. It's going more straight off the club face of the driver. Guys are getting a little more confident, you know, hitting driver. Those golfers, you see in the average driving distance, you know, 283 back in 2015, 297 last year. So guys are just pulling more driver on more holes here, whereas opposed to maybe back when the technology wasn't as good, they're tiptoeing around a little bit at this place. So more drivers than there used to be at this place. Uh, you can also kind of see in the driving accuracy rates that more drivers are probably mean there's a little bit less accurate. Last year, it was sub 50% driving accuracy rates, you know, back in like 2015, 2016, it was, you know, low sixties, high fifties. And then once guys are hitting drivers a little more, more guys are missing fairways, but the penalty from missing fairways though, at least just high level, not a whole lot. And out of 88 golf courses, just with a miss fairway, just in general, it's only the 68th most penal. Basically the difference between your score, if you miss a fairway and hit the fairway, hit the fairway on a hole. Now, a lot of that has to do with some of the overseeded rye grass rough. Not all that challenging. It's two and a quarter inches, but you usually can get a pretty good lie off it. There's also not a lot of hazards off the fairway. So a chance to basically incur a penalty stroke. So you have a chance to really recover if you're if you miss a fairway. And you know, I, I think a, a part of it also comes from the fact that these are difficult approach shots, whether you're in the fairway, whether you're not. You know, I, I just showed you on the first hole here. Small targets, well protected by bunkers. You know, even if you're in the fairway and you got wind as well that you got to deal with. That's probably a big reason why there's not a big difference between your score on a hole if you miss a fairway and not. Because the conditions are just tough for ball striking in general, regardless of where you are. Now, this non-rough penalty, this is what I was talking about earlier. One of the more penal places to miss in a non-rough location. This is the native grasses that I was talking about, where it's basically just garbage they're hitting off of. It is way, if you're going to miss a fairway, you have to make sure you're in that overseed to ryegrass rough. If you're in the native area, that's going to make your life, you know, relatively difficult. If you're in a fairway bunker as well, they're oddly shaped, they're deep. Not a place you really want to get into as well. So if you're going to miss a fairway, miss in the right spot. Make sure you miss in the overseed of rough. Do not miss wildly off the fairway there. Uh, some of the approach shot stats. Well, you know, it's it's got a very low green regulation rate. You know, low 60s, high 50s for the most part. I mean, this average is mostly dried down from 2015. Otherwise, though, I think the average green regulation rate was 64%. So it's a little lower than that. 
Top approach us from under 150 and top approach us from over 150. Uh, if I go back to the ranks here, 17th hardest from under 150, 20th hardest from over 150 out of 88 golf courses. Again, well-protected greens, small targets. You know, this is a golf course where you do have to, you know, you got to be striking it pretty good. Um, you know, you notice with some of the guys been winning this thing, obviously Corey Connors, great ball striker, not a great putter. Still prevailed here. JJ Spawn was hitting it really good coming in. Not a great putter in his own right. And, J and Jordan Spieth was hit on a ball striking heater coming in. So at least with the ball striking stuff, I mean, we say this every single week, but it's probably pretty critical this week that if, you know, you spot a guy, you know, 7,500, 150 to one, and they're trending with their ball striking coming in, you know, maybe that's worth a long shot bet. I mean, long shots can win here. And if you are looking at a favorite, you know, like a Max Homa or jo even a Jordan Spieth or even a Rory for that matter, where they're just struggling with the ball striking, I mean, unless they found something in this time off between the players and now, you know, they're probably going to struggle this week. So maybe that's an opportunity to kind of fade them. Uh, around the green, so I mentioned, you know, chipping from the rough, not all that difficult. You know, it's ryegrass rough, you know, two and a quarter inches, not all that deep. Uh, the bunkers, though, that's what I mentioned. These are really deep bunkers with some sharp edges. Getting up and down from these bunkers are very tough. Now, they did the, the bunker work after the 2021 uh, Valero Texas Open to try to make it a little easier did not really impact it all that much in 2022. It was the sixth hardest out of 38. A little easier last year, but that could be just weather conditions and just randomness. But still, uh, if you're going to miss a green, you're probably going to get penalized for it, especially if you miss uh, in a bunker. And then putting. Yeah, this is really up and down. I can't really explain why some years has been really difficult to putt on these greens. Some years it's not. Maybe it has to do possibly with if there's more Bermuda coming up through the greens versus if it's more overseed. I don't particularly know just looking at these years, which is which, but it's kind of all over the place. So um, I'm not really, but again, though, like, the most difficult part of this golf course is the ball striking stuff. And that's kind of the more pronounced, at least what I'm looking for with the golf stat stuff. Honestly, I'm not really all that concerned with putting all that much this week. So let's go to the course fit tool. Uh, let's see. Nope. You're going to give me Morrow Park again. I want TPC San Antonio. Where are you? Come on. And here we go. Thank you for your patience. Okay. So again, this is a predictive chart where the types of guys you would expect to do well at TBC San Antonio based on historical stats. And driving, as far as like dis discriminating against shorter hitters, longer hitters, accurate hitters, fairway finder, or guys who just bomb it everywhere, very low correlation as far as those guys are expected to do well. Seems like anybody with all walks of life off the tee can do very well here because, you know, I mean, the missed fairway penalty is not all that significant. It's everything's really right out in front of you with the winning conditions. Maybe that neutralizes things a little bit as far as if you're an accurate hitter, maybe you have a little more difficulty hitting the fairway. If you're a bomber, maybe it's a little more offline. But as far as like there's been different, as far as the skill set, as far as driving, not a whole lot of predictability. So while you have to drive it all that good here, Trying to figure out who is going to drive it all that good is not a very easy feat. But in, there's a higher correlation than PG2 or average of guys who are their irons really good coming in or just are good iron players in general. And guys are really good around the green. Obviously, lower green regulation rate, windier conditions, tough bunkers. Sometimes you're chipping off a of tight lies back into the greens here. Having a good short game usually has helped you do very well in this tournament. And putting... You know, it's about PG Tour average. You know, for every Jordan Spieth, who's a pretty good putter, you know, or Matt Kuchar, you got your Corey Connors, JJ Spons. So it's about what you would normally expect for a PG Tour uh, golf course. As far as like the comp courses go, sometimes I like looking at these on Data Golf for a reference point, but the top list is not very helpful. Either it's a bunch of golf courses with no strokes gain data, like Monterey Peninsula or uh, Nine Bridges. Remember that? The old CJ Cup? You know, or La Quinta Country Club 
or it's golf courses that they haven't played in years, like Brown Deer Park. I don't even know what tournament they played uh, at Brown Deer Park or St. George's. They only played there once uh, there or Glen Abbey. They haven't played there in six or seven years. And Dustin Johnson won that all the time. So it's not helpful anyways. He's not in this field or TBC Sugarloaf. So unfortunately, the uh, the comp courses listed on data golf are not all that helpful. If you want to go a little deeper, you know, TBC Craig Ranch, Colonial, Pebble Beach, Riviera, probably um, more so because there just isn't a correlation with, with, with drive accuracy at either course. But if you want to look at some of those, you can do that. And then the last thing, uh, we'll close it out here before uh, we'll let everybody go for or Easter, as far as the, uh, well, I have two things. The within event correlation, how you basically separate yourself in the tournament uh, once you're playing it. It's kind of all over the map here. So if we're looking at 2023, you know, your ability to separate yourself and gain strokes through your tee shots, not as impactful last year, rel- you know, compared to the average PG2 or golf course, and neither through distance or accuracy was a great way to do it. So just... You weren't able to separate yourself a whole lot from the field through tee shots. You were able to do it with your iron play and around the green, a little less with your putter. But if we go back 2022, load it up here. Now, apparently the better you drove in a tournament, you were able to separate yourself a little better than you did the PGA Tour, average PGA Tour golf course. Iron play was about what you normally happens at a standard stop. Again, Guys who got it up and down a little better than everybody else were able to gain more strokes, probably because of the tougher conditions around the green. Putting was not a very predictive measurement, though. So this was, um, you know, winning score was only 13 under. Maybe it was more of a ball strikers tournament. But in 2021, I'll go back to that. Again, it kind of reversed itself then. Off the tee is a slightly more uh, predicted towards how you do in tournament versus other PG Shores golf courses. Now around the green is not as predictive. Putting is now predictive. So it's all over the place. Just kind of look at the last three years, though. They're all relatively close to what the normal PG Tour golf course is. So I'm just going to kind of treat it what it is everywhere else. Like, I'm not really looking at, like, a special skill. Like, sometimes I'll see these charts, and it's a huge edge of how you drive it. So I'm really looking for guys to drive it really good because, you know, chances are if I find a really good driver, and through your driver – is how you separate yourself the best or way more than the average feature for a golf course. Now I'm going to look at that. Or so your iron play, your putting. The fact that it's kind of all over the place and, and it's not all that different than other PG Tour golf courses, I'm kind of just going to, you know, weigh everything about the same. You know, obviously always looking at good iron play. You know, the fact that driving isn't all that predictive at this place far as if you're a bomber or if you're an accurate hitter, I guess like I'm going to look for guys, I guess, who are driving it good, but not necessarily discriminating against the types. Um, And, you know, because scrambling is pretty predictive at this place, I'll probably look at that too. But again, like I'm not really waiting anything all that differently that I would wait like at a normal golf course, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And the proximity charts for the approach shots. So, I want to show you two two tournaments. So for the most part, everything under 150 is about the same every single year. There's a higher number of shots from under 125 than the average PG Tour golf course. And there's a lot more from over 250. But what I want to focus on more is this range from 150 to 200 year, because in 2023, there was a lot less shots from 150 to 175 than the average PG Tour golf course and a little bit more from 175 to 200. But if I go back to 2021 here, now it's completely flipped. Now this one has a little more than PG Tour average, and there's a lot less than 175 to 200. So a lot more for 150, 175 in 2021, uh, a lot less in 2023, and then it flipped itself, you know, in both years. So it's probably win based. We, I guess, I don't remember what where the wind was blowing in each tournament to give you a good guess. But considering about 35% of your shots come between 150 and 200, if you just look, focus just on that 50 yard block there, you should be fine. If you use strokes gain per shot on data golf, they break it down from 150 to 200. So you're capturing all that anyways. So it doesn't really matter. But um, if you're somebody who only looks at the 25 yard increments for proximity, if you're one of those dinosaurs, um, that might be a little bit of a challenge. Maybe 
you'll be focusing a little more for 175, 200 when it's going to be a lot less this year. If you just looked at, you know, 2023, where it was a little more. So just be careful with that this week. Um, that's it. Let me uh, remove this. Thank you for joining me on the podcast. Uh, we'll be back on Tuesday for the betting show for the Valero. We also will have a Live Doral show this week. Uh, our last chance to look at the Live guys before they go play Augusta. I feel like that's probably, look, I don't, this might rub people the wrong way, but considering how, how much less we've seen the Live guys this year compared to everybody else, I think everyone should probably make the Live tournament priority versus the Valero. Uh, because these, the top guys are going to be probably engaged to do pretty well ahead of Augusta. They're going to be on a difficult golf course and it's probably more important to get your eye on those guys this week versus what I don't know, Tommy Fleetwood's doing. So, but that's for that show. So thank you for joining me. Uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter at golf gambling pod, uh, subscribe to our podcast on Spotify or Apple. Uh, make sure you also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Obviously, if you're watching this, thank you very much. We give you this content every single week. With that, happy Easter, and we will talk to you on Tuesday.